Hello and welcome to this follow-up of Let's Play Myst. I usually give a little mini-review at the ending of a Let's Play, but due to the way I structured the ending of this one, there was not really any good place for me to do it, and I wanted to talk about uh, more things than usual, so I needed some more time, so I did it in this separate video instead. First, I want to address something that some of you have been wondering about. The agreement with Shady Paradox. Back in 2009, while I was uploading my Riven videos, Shady Paradox contacted me. He was doing real Mist at the time, but told me that his intention had been from the start to do a Let's Play of Mist 3, but then decided to, do, uh, to start from the beginning instead. So he was worried that I was planning to do Mist 3 as well, uh, in which case I probably would have beaten him since my production rate is slightly a lot higher than his. But since I had already decided to do Uru next instead, and at the time with no real intention to do Miss 3, that worked out quite nicely. At the same time, Shady Paradox told me he was glad I'd done Riven, uh, as he'd been unsure on how to approach it himself, since it's such a non-linear game. And he's never played any of the games after Miss 3, so it ended up being the case that we split the Mist series between us that way. It was never the case that either of us said, I'm doing these games and you can't. It just kind of ended up that way. Of course, that was then, and this is now. And I kind of ran out of Myst games, with the exception of Myst and Myst 3, of course. I was already considering making a Myst Let's Play last year, but then Cyan released Myst Online or Live again, and that became my next project instead. And after that I had to think about how to approach this one, and... Uh, I came up with the idea for the tie-in with the Book of Atreus, and I had to figure out how to do that, and what order I wanted to do things in... So, that's why this project took some time to uh, actually get started. But what I want to make clear is that the reason I did Myst is because I wanted to. I like doing Myst Let's Plays and my choices are limited. There are only six games after all. It is NOT, very emphatically NOT, because I didn't think Shady Paradox's Let's Plays uh, is good. Or that I thought I could do better or something. In fact, I think he did an excellent job with Real Mist, but the simple fact is that the two of us have very different styles and there is no rule saying only one person can make a Let's Play for a game. If he ever wants to do uh, Riven or any of the other Mist games, he is free to do so, I wouldn't mind one bit, and I strongly encourage you to watch his Let's Plays, as well as mine, of course. And if I ever end up doing Mist 3, that too will be for the same reasons, and not because I think Shady Paradox's Let's Play of Mist is bad. And about Mist 3, which is inevitably going to come up if I don't mention it in the comments, there is a definite possibility that I might do it one day. But I don't guarantee anything, and it won't be soon. It's not going to be my next project, so don't go sitting around waiting for it, and for the love of God, stop asking me about it. It'll happen when it happens, and again, it won't be soon. Okay, back to Myst. Myst is a difficult game for me to evaluate. I didn't really get into Myst when it first came out. I think I must have played it, but I don't, got, uh, don't, I don't think I got very far. It was only when I played Riven that I fell in love with the franchise, and I didn't return to Myst until after the Masterpiece Edition came out. If that seems strange, remember that I was 12 when Myst was first released. Hardly an ideal age to appreciate a game like that, especially for uh, someone who's uh, native language is not English. So while I appreciate that Myst was a groundbreaking game when it was first released, I didn't really play it back then, and for me it was always overshadowed by its sequel, Riven. And the difference between the two really is quite big, whereas Riven still holds up today, Myst hasn't aged nearly as well. Its graphics have an obvious computer-generated feel to it, uh, and they just look dated. The sound quality is very low, and uh, the low quality of the videos is really hidden only by their wise decision to only use video sparsely. Still, we owe a lot to Myst. It pioneered a new style of games, uh, often imitated, but with mixed results, and it also showed the public what could be accomplished with CD-ROM technology and computer graphics in games. Besides the technical points, though, uh, Myst actually holds up pretty well. Its environments still have that spark of imagination that makes Myst uh, and all the other games in the franchise so great. If I have one complaint here, it's that the ages never really felt like they were ever inhabited. I know it's intentional that there's no one left now, 
But except for Channelwood, I have no clue how anyone survived on the ages. Where did they get food in Channelwood? Where did they even stay in the Mechanical Age, on those tiny islands? Again, it's a minor nitpick, and I know it's just because of technological limitations that they couldn't really show the ages in all their glory like they undoubtedly wanted to. And partly it's, it's Riven's fault too. Riven was so thorough in making the Rivenese village believable and everything on that island just made sense perfectly that it just sticks out when the other games don't do that. It's also the source of my problems with Spire in Myst 4. Riven just set such a high standard for attention to detail that it simply couldn't match. But uh, let's not get into Myst 4 again. I think I've discussed that uh, more than enough. The story of Myst uh, also still works, uh, although obviously the mystery has long been spoiled to me. But many things in the game gain additional meaning uh, thanks to the other games and the novels, so that works both ways. The way the player is dumped into the game and left to his own devices to figure out uh, what to do is something that I quite like. You're unraveling the mystery of what happened on this island and uncovering the uh, history and the background bit by bit, and it's something that quite appeals to me. Unfortunately, it's also the reason that many people never finished Myst, is not everyone has that kind of patience. The puzzles are pretty good too, and uh, not too difficult. It has a few tough ones, and I understand that a lot of people had serious problems with the organ puzzle in the spaceship, though that was never really a problem for me. But on the whole, the puzzles are logical, and the solution's never too far away. With these kinds of games, it's usually a matter of figuring out the train of logic that the developers want you to follow, and once you do, it's not impossible to finish uh, with, uh, without hints. Although Riven would do a better job with integrating the puzzles in the environment, because, well, face it, uh, in Myst they're mostly combination locks after all, um, Riven also went way overboard with the difficulty. Ultimately, Myst is a good game. Even one taken on its own, um, without the rest of the franchise to back it up. And it did start this huge franchise, the likes of which the Miller Brothers uh, could never have foreseen, and which remains to this day my favorite games franchise. That, however, leads us to our next topic. Myst, as part of the Myst franchise, has the unfortunate distinction of being retconned almost entirely out of existence. I'm not kidding either. Nearly everything that happens in Myst has been changed by future developments in the series. Most of the damage was done uh, shortly after Riven's release, when Cyan employee Richard Watson, better known as Rawa, began answering questions on Myst news groups and forums in the late 90s. One of the most widely known problems is that, according to the official explanation of how linking books work, there is no such thing as trap books. I already discussed this in Myst 4, uh, which uses the official interpretation of the red and blue books as ordinary linking books to prison ages, rather than trap books. As I said back then, the earliest mention of this that I could find that trap books don't exist actually dates back to 1998, so it's not that they changed it for Myst 4, it had been changed before then. While removing trap books from the franchise has only a minor effect on the events of Riven, it nearly makes all of Myst impossible. Regular linking books just don't allow for the events we see in Myst. Linking panels work only one way, so there's no way Sirius or Akinar could ever see who was in the library from their prisons in Spire and Haven. Sound doesn't travel through a linking panel either, so there's no way they could, they could talk to you. The same problems also apply to the stranger's interactions with Atrus through the green book at the end of the game, and that wasn't even a trap book to begin with. Furthermore, Using a linking book to a prison age doesn't free the person trapped there. Instead, all we would have accomplished is trapping ourselves on Spire or Haven, unless we brought a missed book with us. Another problem is the red and blue pages. According to the sequence of events revealed in uh, later material, Catherine was trapped first, then Atrus, and finally Sirius and Akinar trapped themselves in the red and blue books, unaware that the other was also being trapped at the same time. That means there was no one left to spread the pages around. Plus, what would be the point of it? Like I said, using a linking book to prison age doesn't free the person inside, so what is accomplished by spreading these pages over all of these different ages? Perhaps most infuriating to some people is the stance that Cyan takes about these changes. Rather than just acknowledge that they're pl plot holes, Cyan maintains that their official version is correct, and that Myst is just an adaptation. 
They take the view which TV Tropes calls the literary agent hypothesis. Normally, when we watch or read a work of fiction, we assume that what we see is an accurate representation of the events. But if we watch a historical documentary or a reenactment or something, you'll assume that any errors are due to the interpretation of those who made the adaptation, rather than history itself being somehow wrong. If you watch The Last Samurai, nobody thinks that that's actually how the uh, events happened in the late 19th century uh, in Japan. It was changed for the movie to make for a more interesting story, for better or worse, depending on how you feel about Tom Cruise, mostly. However, um, the literary agent hypothesis says that a work of fiction wasn't actually created by its authors. Rather, the authors are the literary agents for the people in the story, under the pretense that all of it actually happened. Science says that the Myst games were based on real journals by the real Atris and Catherine, presumably uncovered by the real-world uh, counterpart of the DRC, and that any inconsistencies are the result of dramatic license taken by Cyan when adapting these journals into a playable game. The existence of trap books and the interaction with the brothers is all considered to be inventions on the part of the designers that don't match the supposed reality. In these journals, the stranger presumably uh, just learned about the brothers through journals and observing their rooms in the ages, never actually interacting uh, with them directly. He also wouldn't have met Atrus before actually going to Gavir, so either he found some other way to uh, he found out some other way about the white page, or took it with him by pure, ch pure chance. Now, while this view isn't really a problem in itself, uh, the main issue with it is that it then allows you to basically explain any plot hole away as dramatic license. It is a get out of jail free card for sloppy writing, allowing you to get away with anything because you can always claim that it didn't really happen that way if someone calls you out on it. I'm not saying has, uh, that Cyan has actually done that, but as a writer myself, it does feel like a bit of a cop out that they use this excuse to basically restructure the Mist universe to their liking, uh, removing already established elements that they didn't feel uh, fitted with where they wanted to take it. In truth, what happened is the inevitable result of a fictional work growing beyond what its authors originally intended. This kind of story evolution is natural, and Myst only had the misfortune of being released before its backstory had been fully formed. It happens all the time in various uh, forms of media. Just watch early episodes of the original Star Trek and you'll see exactly the same kind of inconsistencies with later material. Although there is, of course, always the possibility that Richard Watson and Cyan are telling the truth. That Dunny really is real, and Mist really is just an adaptation of these real materials. That somewhere out there, there is a linking book just waiting to be found and take you to these fantastic worlds. Though not terribly likely, it is an alluring thought. And with that, we've reached the true, final end of this Let's Play. I thank you once again for watching my silly little videos and for listening to me ramble, and I'll see you again in a future Let's Play.